This is a student example from your class. I thought it was a very good example of how to create your artwork and how to use the design principles properly. However, if you look at it closely, there is a slight skew to the artwork. This is something that will naturally happen when you're photographing your artwork. So if you'd like to skip this process, you can scan your artwork on a flatbed scanner and it should be perfectly straight as you scan it. However, if you are photographing it, maybe taking a snapshot with your cell phone, which is perfectly okay, no matter what you do, there's going to be a slight skew. So I would like you to straighten it before you submit it in Canvas. The first step is to open your artwork. To open this artwork, I chose File and Open. Notice it's a JPEG file. As a general rule, you do not want to edit your JPEG files because they have lossy compression. They're web file formats and their ultimate goal is to create very small file sizes. However, I am not going to be saving this artwork over and over again. I'm simply going to make the changes and hit save once. So I'm going to leave it as a JPEG for now. If you are going to edit extensively, you should save your artwork as a Photoshop file. And you can do that by choosing file and then save as and then choose the Photoshop option. Once your artwork's open, choose the view menu and rulers to open your rulers or show your rulers. And then use the rulers to click and drag down to create two horizontal guides that will outline the top and bottom of your artwork. We'll repeat that with the vertical ruler on the left hand side of the screen by pulling out to create two vertical guides on the left and right hand side. When you're creating your guides, pull down until your guide touches your artwork. As soon as it touches your artwork in any place, you can let go. Mine's off by a little bit. This will help us figure out if our artwork is straight or not. In this example, the top left hand corner is higher than the top right hand corner. And so we need to pull the top right hand corner up until it's straight with that line. I'm going to repeat that for the other three guides, but you'll notice as I do this that the other three sides of the image are relatively straight. So I'm actually not going to worry about them in this example. Once you have your guides, so you have the things that are going to tell us what is straight and not straight, you need to make a selection of your artwork so that we can straighten the artwork. And so whatever is in the selection is what we're going to modify. The easiest way to do this is to use the polygonal lasso tool. You can grab that by pushing and holding on the lasso tool and a flyout will appear and you can choose the polygonal lasso tool. If you don't have that option, like I don't, it means you have a different version of Photoshop. Um, which is perfectly okay. In order to find it, you'll have to push the three buttons at the bottom of the tools panel and use the flyout menu and look up and down in this long list until you find polygonal lasso tool. We are going to use this to click, 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 click around our artwork to make a selection. Um, in an ideal world, we want to get exactly where the artwork is, but we don't need to get that close. As long as everything is inside the selection, that's what matters. And so if you can't get perfectly on the outside, go a little bit outside the edge of the artwork. So instead of trying to get this corner, I'm just going to click out here and then come across and go past the artwork over here. Come down, go a little bit below the artwork. And I'm making a selection that's slightly bigger than my artwork. Make sure you go back to the original place that you click so that you can close your selection. When you have successfully closed your selection, you will get what's called a marquee, also known as marching ants. People usually refer to, the, to it as that. Now that we have a selection, we're going to modify that selection by going to the edit menu and choosing free transform. Free transform is an option that you can use to scale and warp and do different things to your artwork. Um, but in order for it to do what we want it to do, we need to use a key command or a key modifier. That key modifier is command shift on a Mac or control shift on a PC. When we do that, it'll allow us just to move that top right hand corner. So command shift, I'm pushing and holding those keys down. Now in the top right hand corner, Notice how when I do that, my cursor changes from the double arrow to a white arrow. With the white arrow, I'm going to click and drag the corner handlebar. And you'll see, my computer's running a little slow today, but it will modify the artwork. I'll give it a second to process. Yours should certainly not be taking this long. Once you have that corner, you're going to move it up and down until it snaps to the corner 
of the guides that you made in the previous step. And so I'm just going to keep moving this up and down until my artwork lines up in the corner. Gonna slowly go into the corner there until I feel like it's as close as it's going to get. Once I'm happy with where it's at, I'm going to let go of my mouse and then let go of the modifying keys and on the top of the screen on your application bar you're going to hit the check mark to accept the changes or the modifications. Once you've accepted the changes you're going to remove your selection by using command on a Mac or control on a PC to do command D or control D and it will deselect the selection. You can also get rid of your guides by going to the view menu and towards the bottom choose clear guides. Now our artwork is straight. The next thing we need to do is crop it so that the only thing we see in our, our image is the paper and the ink that we've used. The crop tool is usually about the six tool down on your tools panel. If you hover it will tell you what it is. You're going to select it. There are a number of different ways to use the crop tool. I would like you to get into the habit of making decisions about your artwork. And so if you come up to the application bar here, there's a drop down menu and you can choose different options. I would like you to find the width height resolution option in your particular version of Photoshop and then fill in the dimensions that are required for this project. This is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper that you're provided with. Oops, make sure you do it the right direction. And um, printing resolution is 300, so I'm going to change this to 300 resolution. You can now use the cropping frame to crop the artwork. And as I'm saying this, I can't remember if this project was 11 by 14 or 8.5 by 11. Whatever it is, enter those dimensions. They'll be different for every project. Um, with the artwork selected, I just used Command or Control minus to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to drag these little handlebars in until all we have in the selection area is your artwork. Um, once you're happy with the placement of it, you can accept the change by hitting the check mark on your application bar and it will crop it to the new size. The last thing that I want to show you how to do is to brighten the whites. You can see that this is white paper, but if you look at it carefully, it kind of has an off-white tint to it. A levels adjustment is perfect for what we need. Find your layers panel, which should be open on your workspace, and if it's not, you can go to the window menu and choose layers. From here, we're going to create what's called an adjustment layer. The adjustment layer is the little black and white circle. I like to call it the black and white cookie at the bottom of your layers panel. If you click on it, a flyout will appear and you have a number of options. Click on Levels. A Levels Adjustment layer appears and if you look closely on your workspace, there should be a Properties panel somewhere that's showing you information about your artwork. It's called a histogram. Let me make it bigger. And it shows you the distribution of value in your artwork lights and darks. We actually do a whole lecture on value later in the semester in this course. What you want to do is use the histogram to see where the dark areas, which is the left side of the histogram, and where the light areas, which is the right side of the histogram, are. In theory, everything in your artwork should be 100% black or 100% white. There are sliders underneath the histogram. Notice here on my histogram that the little black arrow, which is kind of probably hard to see on the video, is away from where the, the distribution is, where the histogram values are. If I drag the black arrow to the right, all of the dark shades that fall from the arrow to the left will be 100% black. So as I drag it to the right, you should notice that the black areas become darker and darker and darker. And so if I want them all to be 100% black, I need to drag them over so that all of this visible 
graph, the histogram, is to the left of the black arrow because where the black arrow is is 100% black, so everything from there to the left is 100% black. Now the, the light area in comparison to 100% black is now very, very, very not white, correct? So we'll do the same thing. We'll take the white arrow on the right hand side and we'll drag it to the left and all of the colors on the histogram that fall from that arrow to the right are 100% white. So we're gonna keep dragging it until all of those colors fall to the right of the histogram. Now I've gone too far. We can back up a little bit and you can go back and forth until you find the perfect area for your adjustment. What's great about adjustment layers is if I wanna compare the before and after, you can just toggle the little eyeball on the adjustment layer in Canvas. So when I turn this off, you can see how kind of dull the image was before and how bright it is now. When you're done, you can save your artwork by choosing File and Save, and it will save in the JPEG format since that's what I have open, or you can do File Save As, and you can save it as a PNG file if you're putting it in Canvas or a Photoshop file if you want to have it available for editing in the future. My computer's running a little slow, so please bear with me. When you're saving it, make sure you give it a name, a location, make sure you remember where that location is and a file format. I'll save this as a PNG file. I'm gonna save it on the desktop because it's only gonna be temporary. And then I'm going to change it as crop example, change the name, and hit save. A JPEG, a PNG, and a GIF are all examples of web file formats, so any one of those file formats is okay to embed in your discussion in Canvas.